Greenville, South Carolina, July 13th, 2017. Two children would get caught up in this fatal love triangle. Unfortunately, Hayden King, only nine, and Harper Edens, just four. Their life would end so young. The Facebook post read, quote, This little girl has no self-respect and no morals. She dates married men who have children, and she doesn't even want or like kids. Unquote. That was a post by 36-year-old Jessica Edens to Meredith Lee Rami, 28. Jessica knew that her estranged husband was having an affair with Meredith. She was his co-worker at Michelin. Jessica and her husband, Benjamin Edens, were going through a nasty divorce. Jessica had suspicions that Benjamin and Meredith had been together for at least a year during their marriage. Ben and Jessica had separated in April. Him and Meredith would move in together at the Stone and Main Apartments, according to the court records at the Greensville Police Department. Jessica wanted sole custody of their daughter, and Benjamin wanted joint custody. Benjamin is only the biological father of Harper. Ben says his wife was using their daughter as a weapon against him. She wouldn't let him call or see her. He filed for joint custody on July 11th and was granted visitation rights. That didn't sit well with Jessica. She wasn't happy with that at all. He was always trying to get this restraining order against Jessica. Jessica would show up at the home he now shared with Meredith. Jessica had even contacted over 35 of Meredith's friends and relatives on Facebook and she told them that Ben Edens was a married man and that them two were in a relationship. And she told them that she was still with her husband. On July 13th, Ben would get a fury of text messages. Quote, you will have exactly what you want. No wife, no kids. All you had to do was end things with Meredith. Try to work things out with me. But no, you made the decision to not have a family. Now you are going to live with that decision. Unquote. Ben texts back, what do you mean, no kids? Are you planning to harm them or take them on the run? Answer the question, or I'm going to ask for an emergency hearing to have the kids removed from our custody. I am dead serious, Jessica. Jessica continued to text, quote, life will be better soon, unquote. Ben responded, I don't know what you mean about that, but I don't like the way it sounds. You need to ask for help. Jessica would continue with the Texas quote, this is the hardest thing for me to do, but you have destroyed me. You continue to destroy me. You will never be able to hurt me or my kids anymore. It won't matter after today. No more pain after today. Unquote. She was trying to get Ben to meet with her so that they could talk. He was apprehensive about meeting and asked if they could just talk over the phone or continue texting. Now, 
you got to understand, Jessica, she wanted to be a housewife, a stay-at-home mom. She even started a photography business, but things just wasn't working out at this point for her and Ben. In the court filings, after Ben had basically moved out of the home in April, he said his marriage was, quote, unloving, unquote, and he said that he slept on the couch almost the entire marriage. Jessica would text again, quote, I guess I shouldn't expect anything from you. I have come to terms with the fact that I never meant anything to you. I'm just tired of being in pain, unquote. Ben was extremely worried. He would text Jessica's mother with concerns about the children. 20 minutes after the last text was sent from him to Jessica's mother at 4.41 p.m. on July 13th, Jessica arrived to the Stone and Main apartments. She would find Meredith sitting in her car in the parking garage on the third floor and she would shoot <laughs> Meredith in her head and walk off. Residents would see the aftermath. One residents even felt a faint pulse on Meredith's wrist. They called 911, but it was too late. Meredith would die. She sent him one last text, quote, you don't have to worry much longer. You have no stress, no worries. You are welcome. Enjoy your life then, unquote. Jessica would drive seven miles to the parking garage in Greenville Pickens Speedway in Easley. She would call Ben one last time. She said, everyone you love is gone. Do you hear me? I'm about to be gone too. And she hung up the phone. Ben tried calling back, but it would go straight to voicemail. Jessica and her children were found in the black truck, still running. All had shotgun bullets to their head with the Glock 27 gun that she would steal from her mother. Jessica's stepfather was the chief deputy of the Anderson County Police. His name was Mike Mitchell. Mitchell said Jessica said that she needed a gun for protection after Ben moved out, but he hadn't given it to her. Jessica stole her mother's gun, is what they're saying. In the truck with the wounded deceased bodies, she would leave suicide notes that had already been written. She basically was saying to her mother that she knew that she was selfish, but she couldn't live with the pain any longer and that she loved them, meaning her family. She even left a note to her first child's father, Neat. She apologized to him and she said that she never meant to cause him any pain. She would even leave a note for her husband, the one she said caused all this pain. Quote, you have caused me more pain than ever that I've been in in my life. You have caused my children pain. 
I hope you rot one day for what you have done to me and my kids. I hope you live with the pain and the shame and the guilt for the rest of your life.